When you're using linear functions for your applications, there are some examples that come up pretty frequently. And one of them is a linear depreciation. So some things to keep in mind. Okay, so slope corresponds to a rate of change. So I'll try to talk a little bit about what these are actually standing for. So if we're going to do a linear depreciation, I've just made up a function here. So v of x, the value of whatever it is we have, as a function of x, so x is going to be our time since when we purchased it or whenever we started paying attention. So v of x equals negative 230x plus 3,000. So um, here's our constant part, probably what we paid for it or what its value was when x was 0. And then the negative 230, right, that's our slope. That's the rate of change of the value. So the slope, the rate of change, is negative 230. So this is right, how much the value decreases each year and decreases that negative sign. So the other way this happens that can be a little more confusing is you're just given two values, and sometimes they're kind of hidden, but um, let me show you some tricks for finding them. So here's another way this uh, similar question would look. So some words not in there because I got lazy writing. Um, find a rate of change or find the linear depreciation model if the initial cost of something was $20,000 and in five years it's worth $7,000. $7,000. So find the rate of depreciation. How much does it go down each year? So one of the things I really like to do with these is make a quick little sketch. And it's just going to be really basic, but I'm going to put x my time in years. If you want to use t's, that's great. I'll put my values up here. Notice I only have quadrant 1 here because we won't have negative time or negative value. And then I'm going to plot those, those two points that are in there. And I have three numbers. There's a fourth number hiding that initial means x is 0 when the value is 20,000. Don't care where they go. I'm just going to pick something there. So 0, 20,000. And in 5 years, so out here someplace where I get the 5, I'm up at 7,000. I don't care about scale. I don't care about anything like that. Um, but I want to see, right, I have a negative slope, that's good, and I have two points, which means I can use my formula for slope to find that rate of change. So change in y, 20,000 minus 7,000, over change in x, 0 minus 5, and we would do that math and get 13,000 over negative 5, and whatever that might turn out to be, 20 to 2600, negative 2600. So it goes down by $2,600 a year, the value of whatever it is we bought. So, the, so that's one type, linear depreciation. How does the value change each year? Now, if you're doing a business class, one of the things you'll talk about is a marginal cost. And this is the rate of change of a cost function. And you should know, or you've probably already seen that right, cost, it can be for revenue or it can be for profit. So marginal is the rate of change of that function that you have. Okay. Now, and here's how we're going to use it this time. If your cost function is linear, or if your revenue function is linear, or if your profit function is linear, the rate of change, the marginal, right, the marginal cost is the slope. Okay, so here it is. The cost function, made it up, for producing recycled skirts is given by the cost function. C of x equals 600 plus 2.75x. What is the marginal cost? So my cost function is linear. Make sure you know why. Exactly. So x is my, here's my only variable, doesn't have an exponent written, that means it's our understood one, makes it linear. And so the marginal cost is simply the slope of that function. So the marginal cost is 2.75. And what that means is how much does it cost to make that next item? Okay, what is the increase in cost to make the, the next item? And since the 
cost function in this case is linear, the cost is right, just one step on the slope. 